Okay, wow, do these games look good or what? So, um, Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. Um, in this video, I'm not going to state the obvious of what everyone's been talking about and seen for themselves, so instead I'm just going to share my opinions and thoughts so far, basing my stuff on the trailer. So, okay, let's get straight into the trailer. This screenshot shows a typical battle. Here, I like the battle system where you can actually see a scenery in the background. This also shows the scale of the Pokemon. Um, so, placing Golurk there, it's like you're seeing through Golurk's eyes at how tall he is compared to Chespin. This is something that I really like about this game already. I'd just like to say the graphics and animation so far look way beyond that of Black 2 and White 2. Being a 3DS game, this would just be out there, pure awesome. The graphics look amazing, there's like hardly any more pixels, um, and I'm waiting to see a 3D trailer to come out on the 3DS store, uh, and that will really engage anyone. Uh, let's talk about the region for a second. We all know Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh are parts of Japan, and Unova was based off New York. I think Nintendo have taken this region and placed it in a European country, and to me it looks like Paris. This is shown in the start of the trailer where Pikachu is standing on what looks like an Eiffel Tower, and then it like electrocutes the whole city or something, and when the male protagonist has the Eiffel Tower, or a replica of that behind him. So there's my theory of where the new region will be set. Also I guess instead of running shoes you have rollerblades now, which, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Also uh, both protagonists just look so good. I like them so much better than Black 2 and White 2. In this screenshot, it shows a female protagonist running from what looks like a castle with Dratini statues lining the top, as well as the statue in the middle of the lake. It looks like it is a trainer with a Golurk and a Palpitoad. Uh, the story behind the castle and statues are pretty interesting, so time will tell what they are. According to an internet article, Pokemon Company president, and I'm gonna get this wrong, but soon. Kazo Sun Kazu Ishihara shared several points on the new game and this was and one of them was the bonds between players and Pokemon will deepen and Pokemon will become stronger with the new battle structure. This is a really interesting point to say and I am intrigued as to what it means. Alright, let's get down to the Pokedex. The Pokemon Okay, so Generations 1, 3, and 5 were all brand new Pokemon, and Generations 2 and 4 were built up of new ones, as well as evolutions of previously existing Pokemon. I believe Generation 6 will follow Generations 2 and 4. We will have, this ob we'll, we will have the obvious new Pokemon, the starters and basic types that follow. In, in between, it will have older Pokemon evolutions and concludes with the new legendaries. Generation 6 will bring out the total Pokemon count to over 700. I just want to go off topic for a bit with something that irritates me. There are so many people that say Generation 1 will always be the best. The first 151 will always be the best. Generation 5 looks so bad, you know, etc. Well, that's fine. You are free to, to your own opinion, but, like, I feel sorry for you. Stop living in the past. Generation 1, Pokemon Red and Blue, were released in 1996. That was 17 years ago. Like, is it not enough to just, like, move on? Anyway, sorry, but I needed to say that. Um, the starters. All of these starters look superb, and I can't wait to see the final evolution designs. Chespin looks like it could be a grass fighting or a grass dark. It, uh, my first impression was it looked, it reminded me of Nuzleaf, and I like its cute little beanie thing going on there. So yeah. Uh, th okay, the fire type starter, Fennekin. A lot of people favor the design of Fennekin, which is cool. And for the love of Arceus, please no firefighting evolutions. We don't need a fourth of those. And at the moment, it doesn't look like it will have a fighting characteristic or any other type at the moment. I would personally prefer a pure fire type for Fennekin's final evolution. Uh, if you look closely at the trailer when Fennekin is using a move, it looks like a psychic attack. Uh, so. Could Fennekin's final evolution be Fire Psychic? Yeah, who knows. The last type starter, Fruki. This water frog was pretty cool. At first I thought it was like um, similar to the Seismitoad family, but it could possibly be a water ice or a water poison, being like a frog. 
So that would be pretty badass. Okay, so the legendaries. So recently, the uh, Nintendo released the names of the legendaries. So the X legendary is called Xerneas, and my first thoughts was it looked like a mixture a mixture of um, Dialga and Sourcebuck. This Pokemon's type could be anything, really. I'm taking a stab in the dark and guessing it's like a grass psychic or something. The grass characteristic because it is in a forest, yeah. Um, those antlers must be pretty light, otherwise its head would just be like scraping against the ground or something. There is, seriously, like, they're as big as itself. But, um, yeah, Xerneas looks pretty sweet. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one, but the Y legendary is called Eveltol, if that's right. Um, this one, like, it looks badass. At first I thought it looked like a bit of a Darkrai, like Darkrai's cousin or something, but, um, typing wise, I think it'd be like a dark flying, dark fire, or like a bird fire, or something. Uh, these legendaries are a real mystery at the moment, but it's good to have fun and guess this type of stuff. Okay, what we're expecting from the Pokédex. Some old evolution ideas I've thought could be qu quite cool uh, that could be included are Quillfish, Delibird, possibly Morwile, Maractus, and I think it would be cool to see an evolution for Love Disc. Some baby evolution ideas that would be cool would be Pinsir, Heracross, Tauros, Dunsparce, Corsola, Cryogonal, and possibly even Lapras. I would say Kangaskhan, but the whole story behind Cubone and trying to fit that in, could, it could work, but, you know, who knows. I'm really wondering if they will ever create a baby or secondary evolution of Carnivine and Absol. That would be something that I would really enjoy, but they look they look fine just by themselves, but, you know. Uh, there'll be two new fossils. It'd be cool if one of them were rock fire, because we haven't really had that fossil before. Uh, I bet in the new Pokédex there'll be forms, you know, everywhere. Uh, two new evolutions following second and fourth generation. I'd like to see a Poison and Ghost Eevee. They've done Psychic and Dark, so they may as well do the third, you know, Ghost of that little sector. And Poison, just because Poison are the best. In my opinion. And Steel would also be pretty cool. A new Electric Rodent will be there. Following in the footsteps of Pikachu, Pichu, Minamin Plusle, Parachirisu, and Imorga. So there'll definitely be like another little rodent. No doubt there will be a pseudo. Uh, and the trio legendaries. No doubt the new storyline will be excellent, but I'm wondering how the new trio will be involved and what their meaning is. For example, Mesper is the being of motion, Regias represents the Ice Age, and Landorus represents the land. But how well will the new trio be executed into the story? That's I'm really looking forward to that. The meaning behind the X and Y mascots and the trio will be amazing, and that's something I'm really looking forward to. This next section is what I want to see from Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. There has never been a dark gym. I'd like to see one get incorporated into this game for the first time since 1996. I'd really, I really liked in Soul Silver and Heart Gold how the Pokemon followed you around. That was seriously cool. But judging by the X and Y trailer, that is still not the case. Uh, like every other game, there is a villainous team, so I'm hoping X and Y will bring that one step further. The whole storyline with everything, I'm so excited, and it's going to be so interesting to see how it'll all play out. It would be cool to do something different. Personally, in X and Y, I think it would be cool if you could also level up your trainer and gain perks or something that you can use throughout the game. For example, in Black and White, the more you fill the Pokédex with caught Pokémon, the more chance you will get with a critical capture, as shown in the table below. In X and Y, that same strategy can be used, but in a way that you have the power to level up your trainer, just like your Pokémon. How when you when your Pokemon level up, you get like plus three attack or whatever. Maybe your trainer could get that some way as well. I'm sure there could be a whole bunch of perks you can unlock and further your character more. Uh, in Pokemon Battle Revolution, you could customize your character. It would be awesome if that was possible in X and Y or in future games. I think everyone is, you know, waiting for that to happen. Okay, 
I think it would be cool if there was a new legendary being poisoned as, as it is the only type not to be a legendary yet. I would also like to see another bug legendary. Alright. Personally, I feel like Pokemon X and Pokemon Y have come too quickly. The time frame between new generations are roughly two to three years. For some reason, I feel like Unova is still new, especially, especially with Black 2 and White 2. Now obviously, I have no problem with the release date being so close to Black 2 and White 2, but I feel like there should be some spin-off game in between the release. We, we have enough Pokemon Rangers and Mystery Dungeons, so instead we could have Pokemon Snap rebooted onto Wii or Wii U, which I think, you know, that'll be alright. Or even the long-anticipated Hoenn remake. Like I said, I'm not complaining about the release dates, but, you know, bring on X and Y. I don't personally have a major problem with Nintendo deciding to call the games after letters rather than a colour or a gem. I've heard some people will have this whole dispute about it, but um, Game Freak and the creators know what they're doing, so I'm 100% supporting them. No doubt the third instalment for Generation 6 will also be called Pokemon Z. I think it's smart with the new game on 3DS, also being the dimensions of axis of 3D are X, Y, and Z. Pokemon Z could possibly be a green colour, followed by a greenish legendary. Um, the reason I think this is because, if you look at the previous generations, there are two primary colours of red and blue. They are seen throughout the five generations. The third colour in each generation is either yellow, green or blue, excluding generation 5. I think it would be cool for Pokemon Z to be green. I also thought it was a bit odd that X and Y logos are very similar to the look and colours of the Black 2 and White 2 logos, but you know, I'm not complaining, That's it's awesome. Pokemon X and Y have really set something new for everyone. I think the names are the same in every language, as well as the fact that they are being released at the same time worldwide. That is awesome, there's like no spoilers from anyone. It feels like everyone is connected on the same level. I am very excited for Generation 6 and I'm looking forward to Pokemon X, Pokemon Y, the anime, the cards, the new Pokemon, and most of all, the new Pokewrap. Uh, well, that pretty much concludes my theories and opinions on the new Pokemon games. So, thank you for watching the video. Just comment on anything. Um, comment anything you would like to see in X and Y. What are you excited about? Uh, what starter are you going to pick? Your thoughts on legendary types, legendary trio ideas, and even new evolutions, you know, anything. My name is Lolia Autumn. And if you listened through my whole video, then I thank you. Uh, if you didn't, well, I'll hunt you down.